this mess. Few of them are taking any responsibility, and we think that's wrong. Tonight, we had James Kane, former CEO of Bear Stearns, who critics say was playing games, literally, when his company went down in flames. 360's Gary Tuckman is keeping him honest. He lost nearly a billion dollars when Bear Stearns collapsed. But shareholders and employees who lost their jobs aren't exactly shedding tears for the former CEO, James Kane, because he's still said to be worth some $600 million. The smart ones take some of their holdings and diversify into bonds, into other assets. So even if the plane goes down, they have their parachute. And did Bear Stearns' plane go down? A stock that traded just months before for higher than $133 a share was dealt to J.P. Morgan Chase at a fire sale for $10 a share. If the CEO of the company doesn't know that they're about to drive off the cliff and, and blow up, then who, who else would have? Blaming James Kane for the demise of a firm that didn't lay off a single employee during the Great Depression comes from many quarters. Ace Greenberg, the former CEO of Bear Stearns, who was succeeded by Kane, told the New York Times he was a one-man show. He didn't listen to anybody. Financial analysts deplored the firm's mentality. Bear Stearns was one of the Wall Street firms that was really at the center of abusive subprime lending. Even the presidential candidates who differ on so much have had some similar views on this. CEOs got greedy. Something seriously wrong when the American people are left to bear the consequences of reckless corporate conduct. While Mr. Kane of Bear Stearns, Mr. Mozilla of Countrywide, and others are packed off with another 40 or 50 million for the road. Many critics say Kane was often playing bridge or golf and seemed to be somewhat out of touch as Bear Stearns' hedge funds collapsed and chaos ensued. Watching the Bear Stearns debacle unfold, one certainly gets the sense that Kane was less involved than he should have been in the final months. And that really goes a long way to explaining why so many of the employees are so unhappy. We call James Kane at his home today, a woman who answered said he could not come to the phone. Kane has strongly defended his record. Five months before the collapse, he wrote a memo to employees insisting that he was intensely focused on the job. Regarding news media criticism of him, he declared, don't be distracted by the noise. I am certainly not. And he signed it, Jimmy. After the collapse, he told Fortune magazine a conspiracy of unnamed financial sharks was responsible, and he hoped authorities would nail the guys who did it. But he was the boss, and the failure of his legendary firm has led to massive heartache, earning James Kane a place in our list of culprits of the collapse. Gary Tuckman, CNN, Atlanta. Let's make it official. James Kane, former CEO of Bear Stearns, now joins our 10 most wanted culprits of the class. We began with Joe Cassano from AIG, followed by Richard Fold from Lehman Brothers, Chris Cox from the SEC, Senator Phil Graham of Texas, former chairman of the Federal Reserve, Alan Greenspan, Ian McCarthy, CEO and president of Beezer Homes USA, and Angelo Mazzillo, the founder of Countrywide Financial. Up next, the